Hello, I'm Professor David Holden. I'm a military historian and a veteran. All these views are my own and in no way represent the US Army or the federal government. So today we're gonna to be discussing what is ailing Biden's America? Now, those of you that are witty are probably thinking, well, Biden's ailing America. <laughs> There's more to it than that. Most of my students are military officers. One of the things I help them do is look at how people develop theory and doctrine. And to do that, we go back to this guy named Clausewitz, who was a Prussian that lived 200 years ago during the Napoleonic era. And you're probably wondering, how could someone who lived 200 years ago have anything to say about what goes on for today's military that's highly technological? Well, let me show you because it also has some bearing on Biden. He could learn a few things too. Clausewitz had this famous saying, that theory and reality should never disdain each other, rather they should complement each other. So let me give you an example of theory and reality disdaining each other when they don't complement each other. So it's July 1st, 1916, World War I. The British are preparing to assault German positions. And you know, at this point, everyone's fighting in trenches. If you've ever seen a World War I movie. The British fire 1.5 million shells on German positions before they go over the top. Once they go over the top, they assume that after firing 1.5 million shells, and they fire another 250,000 on July 1st itself. So you're looking at 1,750,000 shells are fired on German positions. They assume that nothing could survive on the other side. They, all they'd have to do is walk over the top, do a little mopping up, and be game over. It'd be that easy. The British go over the top, and on the first day of the battle, they suffer 60,000 casualties, 20,000 of them dead. We went to Iraq and Afghanistan in totality, let's round up, 20 years. We suffered 8,000 killed in 20 years. They did that in a morning on the Somme. That's what happens when you have a doctrine, a theory, if you will, and it disdains reality. Here's a second example of when theory and reality disdain each other. The Army Air Corps, which would later become the Air Force, in the Second World War, when we were bombing Nazi Germany, before we got over there, we assumed that our bombers, right, our theory, our doctrine was that our bombers could fly over Germany from England, bomb Nazi Germany, and fly back. And they could do so unescorted. That means they would need no fighter protection. Rather, the bombers would be arrayed in these box formations with interlocking lanes of fire. So in theory, as you flew over, you would be able to fly pretty close to 360 degrees of fire at any direction, and thus protecting your bomber formations. What we found out was that that was an, ex an extremely painful and painfully wrong theory. Because once we started flying over, we were taking insane losses, which is why the British did most of their bombing. They did night bombing, because they quickly realized the losses were unsustainable. When your theory disdains reality, in other words, it doesn't complement, who wins? Your theory or reality? Reality wins every time. The Biden administration has an ideology. An ideology is a, is, a, is a type of theory. It's a belief on how you think the world works or how you would like it to work. And when your ideology doesn't complement reality, right? when your theory doesn't complement reality, in this case, their ideology, the Biden administration and their belief on how the world works doesn't conform to reality, then reality wins. And that's why everything the Biden administration touches turns into a disaster because their underlying assumptions about reality are wrong. They're seeing everything through an ideological lens. And so when they put into practice their theory, they hit reality and they're like, what's going on? This isn't going right. This, why did this happen? That's why everything Biden touches falls apart. So when your theory is that most people in America that are white are racist, that this country is racist, that its institutions are racist, that its laws are racist, and then you take these woke values and ideas and you start teaching this throughout the curriculums of America, it turns out that uh, parents aren't real happy about that. And you start teaching gender theory through stories to kindergartners, it turns out that parents don't much care for that either. I mean, these are people that believe in the North Pole and Santa Claus and elves and, and fat men coming down chimneys. And by the way, they're going to be very disappointed this year because the Grinch starring Pete Buttigieg has been AWOL for the last two months and all the presents are sitting on container ships outside the ports in California. So again, that's another example of theory and reality colliding. But when you tell people that critical race theory doesn't exist and yet they're seeing it in the books and they're seeing it in the classroom assignments, 
parents aren't going to stand for this. And so then you have an election in Virginia, a heavily left-leaning state, and they get walloped in part because their theory, their ideology is colliding with the reality. The reality is most people aren't racist. So when you go teaching children that most people are, it turns out parents get pretty upset. When you decide that you are going to evacuate Afghanistan and the country is going to be just fine, and you tell the American people that it's going to be just fine, and then it collapses like a house made of Legos. No. I have no idea. In a matter of weeks, again, that's your ideology your theory how things are going to function colliding with reality. When Biden was elected president and he implicitly conveyed the idea that the American border was open and then the border gets crushed by people coming from Central and South America to the United States and there's a border crisis and you're like, well, this was kind of unexpected. Well, what did you think was gonna happen? This is their ideology, their progressive ideological lens colliding with the reality. When you kill the Keystone Pipeline, which was going to bring 800,000 barrels of fuel or oil into the United States once completed per day, that equates to 33,600,000 gallons of gasoline each day. And when you're hostile to the oil industry, they're probably not gonna be drilling as many new wells. And now fuel prices are going up, oil prices are going up, heating prices are all going up. None of these things suddenly befell the Biden administration. Most of them were a product of their own policies. Look, the gas prices didn't just all of a sudden hit five bucks. They started creeping up late last spring. People were talking about this. They could have taken action then, and they didn't. In part, they're okay with these gas prices because in their minds, it's gonna push people towards electric vehicles that much faster. But that does nothing to help you with you know, heating your house, for example. People don't want their kids to be taught woke stuff at school. They want them to go to school, learn how to read and do arithmetic. That's what they want. Afghanistan. Most Americans, even if they were in favor of leaving Afghanistan, they'd rather America not be embarrassed on the world stage. Most Americans want order on the border and they would probably want some kind of reform to the immigration system. But what they don't want is open borders. Most parents would like presents under the trees for their kids. What they don't want are all the presents sitting on ships outside the ports. That's what they don't want. Those boats didn't all of a sudden just stack up there. Again, they started to back up months leading up to this point and little or nothing was done. They're just late to the game on everything, in part because they're just shocked. They're constantly shocked by reality. I think G.K. Chesterton, who is an English philosopher and writer, could shed some light on this situation. So he gives this story. Say, for example, there's a law or an institution, but for simplicity's sake, Let's say there's been a fence that's been erected across the road. Two reformers, a modern reformer and a wiser older reformer are on a walk. They run into this fence and the young reformer or the modern reformer says, I don't see the use of this fence. I'm gonna tear it down. To which the wiser reformer says, I'm not gonna let you tear down that fence. First, I want you to go away. I want you to think about it. And when you've thought of a use for that fence, I want you to come back and then maybe I'll let you tear down that fence. See, this story is about first and second order consequences, right? The first one, the first order consequence, you generally figure out. I like going out to eat a Panda Express with my kids. Going out to Panda Express fills me up and it tastes great. That's the first order effect. The second order effect is if I do that every day, I'm gonna get fat, right? That's the second order effect. The third order effect might be I might get cardiovascular disease or something. I don't know, I'm not a real doctor, I'm a fake doctor. I'll have to ask my brother who's the real doctor. The Biden administration is much like this, right? They're, they're the young reformer. And, and so they encounter these situations. Take for instance, the police. Well, police are racist. We don't need police, let's get rid of the police. First order consequences, since all police are racist, that we've got rid of all the racist police, but you've also got rid of all the good police, right? That's the first order consequence. Second order consequence is, well, now you have this massive increase in crime. Well, that's not good. The third order effect might be now property prices go down, people start to move out, and now there's less taxes, and as a result, the, the city as a whole starts to suffer. So you have first, second, and third order effects. But if you only ever think of the first order effect, and that's an easy one, most of us can understand what the initial reaction or consequence is going to be of our actions. The second order and third order become much more difficult, and you often have to sit back and think about them. And it's often, as I tell my students, it's the second and third order effect that really gets you. So yeah, the first order effect is you give people money because of COVID, right? They're staying home. So you give money to help them out there. The second order effect is, well, now there's a lot of people 
a lot of businesses that are hiring, but you can't get enough people to come work because they're still living off the money the government gave them. Then you have the third order effect is that because you can't hire people to work, you're short on truck drivers and you're also short on people that are working at the ports to unload all the shipping containers. So you've now compounded the problem. And then on top of that, you come up with the vaccine mandate that says, hey, you tell businesses, if these people don't get the shot, then you gotta let them go or you're gonna be fined. Okay, well, the problem is that that just compounds the problem of finding the people to work in these various sectors. You have to think through the second and third order consequences of the actions that you're taking. And the Biden administration has been terrible at this across the board. And we're all suffering the consequences because they can't think through their problems because they're looking at everything through a theoretical and ideological lens that does not comport to reality. And when your theory conflicts with reality, you lose. And right now we're all losing because the Biden administration can't seem to come up with something called common sense. I hope you like this video. You can support me at davidwholden.com or at Patreon. Links are down below. If you thought this was useful, found something helpful, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you. Have a good day.